This is AP Precalculus. We're on the notes for topic 2.12, logarithmic function manipulation. A bit of reading, here we go. Since logarithmic expressions can be also written in exponential form, the same properties that apply to exponents can be also applied to expressions involving logarithms. These properties allow us to manipulate logarithmic expressions to form equivalent expressions that may be useful when solving equations or graphing functions involving logarithms. This is a mouthful that I guess I didn't really need to read. Um, we'll come back to this in a sec. Let's start with what they say in the notes. So here are three properties of logarithms that you might want to know. There's the product, the quotient, and the power property. The product property, if the inside is being multiplied, the outsides are being added. So I can simplify this to multiply. Here, let me say this. Multiply inside is the same as adding the outside. And this one can be simplified as to say, if you divide the inside, you subtract the outside. And finally, this rule, um, the best way to explain it is if I have a power of, or an n, the n can be brought down in front or the n can be brought up to the power. They are interchangeable. They can go either direction. So a number out front might actually be a hidden power. Um, this is a super useful property when I'm dealing with uh, the former two properties. I need just a log and a log. There's no number here. There's no number here. So if I have like a number like three, I have to put the three up here and make this an x to the power of three. I can't have a number in order to use the quotient property or the product property. There are a few examples that you can read down here. Multiply the insides, add the outsides. Um, the one thing that I should note is that these bases have to be the same. That will affect maybe one problem on the notes, and that's it. So same power, same power, same power, et cetera, et cetera. All of these have the same powers in order to be used. Um, you'll see that this will be useful in the really, really hard problems. I might as well talk about it now. I'm calling it the Sindel's matching base property, although I don't need my name attached to that. Whenever you have a base that matches, log base b of b, that is equal to 1. This is asking the question. This logarithm is asking the question. What power, I guess this is the what power, should b be raised to in order to get b? Well, b to the power of 1 will get b. So the answer here is 1. So if I have something like this, if I'm just trying to say, okay, 6 to what power will be 6? Six? 6 to the first power is 6. You might say, that's so simple, Mr. Sindel. I knew that. Well, in order to multiply by 1, it's technically multiplying by log base 6 of 6. That will affect us when we're trying to create something out of nothing. All right, let's move on to example 1. I want to rewrite these as a single logarithm using the previous rules. So, notice that the outsides are being added. That means I'm multiplying the insides. You're going to have log with the same base of 4, and I'm going to multiply the insides x times y, or just xy. In the next one, you have to have the same base. This is going to be log base 3. If I'm subtracting the outsides, I'm dividing the insides. This is 5 divided by z. I write my z's with a little line through them so I can distinguish them from my 2's. You should do the same. This one is a little bit tricky, but I'm going to go and do it in two steps, even though I know I could do this in one step. Again, it's kind of funny that they're all saying these are base 10. If I have log base 10, I'm not supposed to write that base to be nice and simplified. So this is technically log of x. And then I'm going to, if I'm subtracting the outside, I'm really dividing the inside. This is log of x divided by 5. And then I need to subtract with the same base with the z, which means I'm really dividing the inside by z, which means I need to do some sort of, I have a, like an x divided by 5. I need to divide that again by z. So if I'm dividing by z, do I, you can do one of two things, right? You can say, okay, I have x over 5 divided by z, or I can do it this way and say divided by z. Both of these interpretations are correct. However, this, I think, is the most useful because I can do a keep it, change it, flip it, and really I can change this into the following. I can say that this is x over 5, keep it, so I, 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 sorry, I should say this, kept it, I changed it, and then I'm going to flip this, so this is 1 over z, and you can see that the final answer here, which I'll write in red, is actually um, log base 10, so I'm not going to write the base, and then I'm going to have x divided by 5z. Again, making sure that everyone can follow, I have x on the top, and on the bottom I have 5 times z, or 5z. Moving on to letter D. 
All right, so again, noticing I'm going to be subtracting on the outside. The problem here is there's a pesky three here, and I did mention it before. The whole reason that we're learning the power property is in order to get this N out of the way so that we can use the previous two quotient and product properties. So you can see that this three is going to be moved out of the way. I'm gonna say this three comes up here, and now it's going to change the problem into log base two of X cubed minus log base two of y. That's supposed to be a y. There we go. And now if I'm subtracting the outsides, I'm dividing the insides, and this is going to be log base two of divide the insides, so it's x to the power of three divided by y for my final answer. In part E, I have multiple things happening at the same time, but again, problems, two and five, they can't be out there. I can only do logs with nothing in front, so I'm gonna change this to log base seven of A to the power of two, again, bringing this two up here to the power, minus log base seven of B to the power of, again, five comes up to the power, so it's B to the power of five, and then plus log of seven, log base seven of four. Again, now each of these doesn't have a coefficient. I can apply my properties of logarithms and say, okay, if I am subtracting the outsides, I'm dividing the insides. So I'm going to do a squared divided by b to the power of five. Let me have some scratch work. This is not my final problem. I'm going to have a squared divided by b to the power of five. And then I'm also going to be multiplying because when you add the outsides, you multiply the insides. I'm going to multiply by four. So if I multiply this thing by four, you can say it's multiplied by four over one. And this final inside is going to be four a squared over b to the power of five. And now I'm ready to write my final answer. I need to have this all as a logarithm them with the same base of 7 of that 4a to the power of 2 all over b to the power of 5. All of that is inside the parentheses, and I can cross my final answer. And then finally, we have f. And this one is hard. Like a 2. There's no logarithm. All of the things that I talked about before, they have a logarithm, have logarithms, have logarithms. How the heck are you supposed to get a logarithm out of the 2? And this is where Sindel's matching base property comes out. Hey, I have, I don't have a 1, I have a 2. So let's go ahead and say, well, I have two copies of this log base six of six. So watch this. I know that log base six of six is one. As a recap, six to what power is six? Six to the power of one is six. Therefore, this whole thing is one. So I'm going to say, I'm gonna kind of, let me just I'll literally do this. I'll copy this whole thing, copy this whole thing, come down here, and I'm gonna paste it. And I'm going to show you how we're going to manipulate this. This is one of the properties. What I can do to both sides is I can multiply by 2, multiply by 2. So now I have 2 natural log of 6 base... So log base 6 of 6 is equal to, and you've guessed it, 1 times 2 is 2. So, hey, I know who you are. You are you. They are the same thing. So I'm going to rewrite my problem now and say that what I really have here is 2 log base 6 of 6 plus log base six of x. This is the new problem, right? We came from here all the way down to here. All right, now, if this is my problem, I'm going to again say, hey, I can't have a coefficient up front. You need to come up to the power here. So I'm gonna say, okay, the, the two comes up here, and now I really have a log base six of six squared, and then this is also the same, plus log base six of x. And now, if I'm adding the outsides, I'm multiplying the insides with the same base. So my final answer here is going to be, let's do this in a different color, is gonna be log base six of, multiply the insides, six squared, by the way, if you didn't know, is uh, 36. So it's 36 times x, or 36x for my final answer. All right. Um, example number two, which of the following expressions is equivalent to this thing? Okay, so I need to have log base three. All of these are log base three. They're not trying to trick me with different bases, right? They're all log base three, okay. Um, what's happening here? I'm dividing the inside. If you divide the inside, you're subtracting the outsides. So subtracting the outsides. Ooh, random addition. I wonder what's happening there. I don't think that's gonna affect us. And then I, I know that I can see this thing transforming just with the rules. I can say that this is gonna be log base three of x squared minus log base three of y. I, I can see that much because I've divided and that changes to subtraction. But unfortunately for me, this answer isn't over here. So I'm wondering if we're using some sort of property where this two is gonna come down in front. So maybe I can say this two comes down here in front. Now let's look for one of those. Does that look familiar? Hey, okay, look for this one. 
This one has a two out in front, and then log base three of x, log base three of x, and then minus log base three of y, minus log base three of y. This is exactly the thing I'm looking for. B was really close, but I don't distribute the two into each of these because then I would have a y squared down here as well. If this was a y squared, or sorry, if this was a y squared, this would have been correct because I distribute the two into each of these, but it's not, so therefore the answer is C. All right, moving on to the second of two pages, I believe. Yeah, the next one's just uh, a worksheet. So example three. Um, let's read. We have a function log of 6x and we are doing a horizontal dilation. Um, how can we rewrite f in, as g where we have to find some value of k? Huh. So how do we get essentially from u to u um, what value of k will be added? That's essentially what we're writing. So let me go ahead and kind of rewrite this first. So f of x is log of 6x. So I'm just going to swap u into here and I'm rewriting this is going to be log of base 10, I guess, log of 6x, and that's going to be equal to, so I just copy down that equal to right here, and I'm going to rewrite g of x. g of x is log of x, and then plus k, so I'm going to write log of x plus k. Log of x plus k. A key fact that's going to help me solve this problem is knowing that I have something that's being multiplied on the inside here. This is 6 being multiplied by x. If I'm multiplying the inside, I'm probably adding the outside, and that's where that addition is coming from. So let me go ahead and work on rewriting that left-hand side. I can say that this is log with the same base, base 10, log of 6 plus log of x. And just check it out. 6 times x, those were being multiplied on the outside, and now they're being added on or sorry, they're being multiplied on the inside. Now they're being added on the outside. So the plus sign is now on the outside and six and X have been separated. And you can check log of X is the same thing as log of X. So that means that this remaining value must be the remaining value of K. And if you're being super formal about it, you could say, technically I'm gonna rewrite this. So I'm gonna go ahead and just copy paste that because I have technology, copy, paste. Technically that's still equal to all of that. And guess what I'm gonna do now? I'm going to subtract log of x on both sides, subtract log of x on both sides, and by process of algebra, I can say these cross off, and therefore k is equal to log of 6, which is correct. And the important thing to remember from this problem is when I have something that normally is being multiplied on the inside, you would normally think, ah, multiplying the inside means it's a horizontal dilation by a factor of one sixth in this case. A horizontal dilation here is the same thing as a vertical translation, which is super weird because something on the inside changes to something on the outside. So something that's horizontal changes to something that's vertical. Also, we had something that was a dilation change to a translation. To everything is backwards there, but that is how logarithms work. It's kind of cool and kind of confusing. All right, so this next one is a change of base property. It's really useful because um, and back in the olden days, we didn't have calculators that could do the change of base formula. If I had like log base two of three, I'd be like, I don't know how to do that. And what you do is you say, okay, I know log base 10. So you do change both of these A's. As long as these A's are the same, you'd be good, right? You could say log base 10, log base 10. You could say, okay, two would go up here, three would go here, whatever numbers you chose here. And you could actually solve this thing because I know how to do log base tens. It's super useful also to solve these cool little puzzles that I'm about to give you. So this one is interesting in the fact that it can be solved two unique ways. So there's the answer key way and there's also another way. So let me go ahead and set up this problem and show you how to do both ways. So um, we're just going to rewrite f of x. f of x is log base 4 of x. So I'm just rewriting this equation, starting with this f of x on the left. We have log base 4 of x is equal to, again, I copied that equal to sign right there, copy down the k, copy down the k, multiply by, copy down the g of x. g of x is now just log base 9 of x. So I'm going to say k times log base 9 of x. Okay, so all I need to do here is solve for k. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this problem. So I'm going to grab you. I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste. I can solve this two different ways. I'll do method one on the left, method two on the right. Method one. I'm going to rewrite the left side. Uh, method two, we'll rewrite the right side. So rewriting the left side, and I want to rewrite this and change this base to nine. It's the change of base form. I can change this to whatever I want. I need to change it to that thing so stuff cancels out, right? So I'm going to say that this is really log of something over log of something. The change of base formula turns it into a fraction. 
the way that you choose to this power, it has to be the same thing or the same thing. Since we're trying to change this to a nine, let's choose this base to be nine and base nine. Okay, the way that change of base formula works, as a reminder, let me zoom out here, is you always do, this is the top, this is the bottom. This is the top, this is the bottom, right? So if this is the top, this is the bottom, this is gonna be X is on the top, four is on the bottom. So X is on the top and four is on the bottom. And this right side has not changed. I'm gonna go ahead and rewrite it still in blue. This is still K times log base nine of X. So from here, you can see, oh, there's a log base nine of X and a log base nine of X. Those cancel out because really what you're doing is you're saying, okay, divide the right side by log base nine, log base nine of X, divide the left side by log base nine of X. And when you do that, gone, 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 and gone. And one of the answers, the one that is on the answer key is, K is equal to one over log base nine of four. That is perfectly acceptable, and I can get an entirely seemingly different solution that is also correct. So check this out. What if instead of trying to rewrite the left logarithm, let's rewrite the right logarithm and change this one to base four. Watch what happens. So I'm gonna do K times, I'm gonna do a change of base formula, so I'm gonna have a fraction. I'm gonna have log of something over log of something, right? I get to choose this base to be whatever I want. I'm gonna get rid of the nine and change it to a four. So it's log base four and log base four. Again, top and bottom, so X then nine, X then nine. And again, rewrite that left-hand side. The left-hand side is still our log base four of X. And watch what happens. I have log base four of X, log base four of X. Get rid of each of them. Technically what I'm doing is I'm dividing the right side by log base four of X. And dividing the left side by log base four of X. When you do that, gone, 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 gone. And I'm left with, and it's kind of silly, but you can say one is equal to K times, or I guess it's K divided by log base four of X. And then finally you'd say, okay, how do I, um, Oh, log base four of X, what am I talking about? The log base four of X is gone. I'm left with this thing down there, log base four of nine. This is a nine, my, my bad. Log base four of nine. And then finally to undo this K divided by log base four of nine to, um, you can use this diagonal trick of just moving it up here or you can say multiply both sides by log base four of nine. Let me go ahead and do it the, the long way to make sure people don't get mad at me. Multiply the right side by log base 4 of 9. I multiply the right side by log base 4 of 9. I multiply the left side by log base 4 of 9. And these are gone. And my final answer is seemingly different, yet the same. This is the log base 4 of 9. So check it out. I got two solutions. One of them was 1 over log base 9 of 4. This one is log base 4 of 9 without being 1 over. And it's kind of a cool little trick that isn't talked about here. I'm going to go ahead and call it the um, Sindel reciprocal property. I'm, I'm naming things, guys. It's the Sindel um, reciprocal log property. Reciprocal log property. I don't know if it'll ever come up, but it's kind of cool, which is this. If I have one all over log base B of A, it's the same thing as switching the B and A and getting rid of the fraction. This is the same thing as log base A of B. You can switch the... Oops. I didn't mean to do that. You can switch these two and then it becomes the fraction. So that's exactly what we did here. This one was a fraction, this one was not. And I switched the nine and the four, switched the nine and the four. Kind of cool, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and box that cool little property that we just discovered. And then we're moving on to the last problem in our notes. This is the definition of what it is to be a natural logarithm. Just log base E is a natural logarithm. Again, it's kind of weird. Shouldn't it be natural logarithm because NL should be natural logarithm? Yeah, but back in the day, we spoke in Latin and Latin is backwards um, for us. Or maybe we're backwards from Latin. Who, who knows, right? So I do know we're backwards. Okay, example five. So we have this. Oh yeah, so we need to have this and rewrite it. So one thing that I immediately notice is because we're still dealing with properties of logarithms, this three is gonna come up here. This four is gonna come up here. And I'm immediately gonna rewrite this as natural log of X to the power of three minus natural log of Y to the power of four. And if I'm subtracting the outsides, I'm dividing the insides. So if I'm dividing the insides, I should have x to the power of 3 divided by y to the power of 4, and all of that is inside a natural logarithm. So what do we got here? It's going to be a. There we go. 
All right, and that does conclude the, the notes, yes. So that concludes AP Precalculus Notes Topic 2.12 for Logarithmic Function Manipulation. Thanks for watching.